Shifting gears to our roundtable discussion and your phone calls. I detest Hillary Clinton, not because she's a woman, but because she's a monstrous creature that gets hundreds of millions of dollars, 100 million alone from the Saudis, who are the most oppressive people and the most anti-liberal people in the world. And only by being a so-called liberal can she have the cover. If Donald Trump was taking hundreds of millions of dollars from Gulf state dictators, where women are executed if they're caught you know, having sex outside of marriage or whatever, or gays, it's just insane. And then to see her get all this cover and the leftists make jokes, it's sick. And then her crimes on all of the different things she's done, it makes my head spin. So I want to go through the response, what, what Leanne McAdoo felt and saw today uh, as a journalist when she saw this unfold, then Jakari and David Knight, and then we'll also uh, talk to the callers. And then I want to ask our roundtable, where do you think this is going next? Because I have never in, in the last few years had a sense of dread building up like I do now, and my gut's never wrong. And now it's gone from dread to just full on, ugh. I mean, just, just I just want her out of my life. It's like a bad neighbor or a bad boss or a bad employee or a bad cousin or a bad you know uh, relative, whatever it is. You can get them out of your life. You can stop associating with them. They're called stalkers if they won't get out of your life. But I I really have a visceral bad feeling when I look at Hillary Clinton because I, I just it's everything that's wrong with the world. Leanne McAdoo. I agree with you. I was filled with dread, anger. She disgusts me. To me, she is like an oozing pustule, like a seeping bed sore, and someone needs to flip her over. I mean, she's so disgusting. <sighs> she's decaying, and that's what she wants to do to this country. And the fact that the FBI director, the things that he said, he's just count contradicting himself, saying that the Clinton and her aides were extremely careless with the way they handle. Yeah, they could care less about the rule of law. She was very careful to cut the tops off. Yeah, and then saying that they mishandled it. Well, why not at least charge her with mishandling classified information? You know, General Petraeus, the same thing happened to him. I mean, that's at least just a misdemeanor, but not even that. And to just say that they were careless with the way that they did it. Uh, her aide admitted that they burned her daily schedule. Why? Who are you meeting with that you need to burn your schedule? And then the fact that that's, they're destroying federal documents. And they know that they did that. And not to mention the fact that she certified under penalty of perjury that she'd fully complied with the court order. She handed over all of her official emails to the State Department. But we know again and again that that is absolutely false. She used it as a drop box for clandestine espionage. And then when we, this is what we found out during the, the Benghazi hearing, the Benghazi committee, which they said, oh, they didn't get her at all. What a waste of time. Well, so this was in October 2015. Secretary Clinton could not explain why she failed to turn over 15 Libya related emails. And her response oh. is, I was under no obligation to make any of my emails available unless I decided they were work related. Remember, though, first she said a few years ago she didn't even have a server or other email. Right. No, she said she only used one phone. Meanwhile, she's been photographed with multiple devices. And Kumi just says there's nothing there. That's what just makes me so angry is that now the president is flying her around on Air Force One. It's just an additional slap in the face of the American people. Millions of dollars a day. Not only are we not going to charge her with anything, she's going to get away with the crime. We're also going to fly her around on your dime because she's the exalted goddess, uh, Hillary Clinton. But check this out. So this is what, I mean, explain this to me. So Comey says, to be clear, this is not to suggest that in similar circumstances, a person who engaged in this activity would face no consequences. To the contrary, those individuals are often subject to security or administrative sanctions, but that's not what we are deciding now. So if anybody else does what Hillary Clinton did, they'd be in big trouble, but not Hillary Clinton. Nope, she gets flown around on Air Force uh, One. It's this gimmick. It's the gimmick that she's a woman. It's just, this is who they want. It's her time. It's already been decided. They asked her to step down because it was Obama's time in the past. Now it is her time, and they'll do whatever sure. they can. And Here's they my next question. What it looks like. Here's my next question. We're going to Jakari. What does your intellectual but also your gut level tell you about what she'll do when she gets in? Well, I think Jerome Corsi nailed it. I mean, she is, we've had prophets say, you know, that Obama would be the last president. I truly feel like that could possibly happen if she becomes the president. She will be become a dictator. dictator. So many things will happen under her, and she's just going to go. 
That's what Secret Service agent Burns said on her last week. He said she wants a socialist dictatorship. Yeah, and all these people who over the weekend were hashtagging America was never great, you're going to get what you've asked for. Exactly. America has had a lot of problems. I, I, we talk about it. They don't even teach U.S. history anymore except bad stuff. What about compared to all the other countries? Right. Because, because they only teach you what America did that was bad. Why did everybody want to come here then? Because compared to other places, it was great in many ways, and its ideals helped lead the world in women's rights and in so many other issues. Now, England led the world in ending slavery, and then we were kind of late to the game in that. But 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 I mean, it, it's just so crazy how these socialists holding up their smartphones and all this stuff bitch about everything when it's the ultra elite that are funding them to help right. overthrow the middle class. So there's no way out. Jakari Jackson, your take on Hillary and where all this is going. Well, just like that caller that you had on earlier in the show, I believe he said he was some kind of a defense contractor. And he said that he's not allowed to use uh, the government information on his personal phone or send it to a personal email and all that. And you look at the actions of Mrs. Clinton, who is doing that exact same thing, and you contrast that with uh, Guccifer or Bradley Manning or Snowden, Snowden or Assange, all these guys who get this classified information, they want to run them through the ringer. But you have Mrs. Clinton, who's very much aware of she's, that she's not supposed to do this because your caller knows that. Of course, she has to know this, but she just gets away with it because she's Mrs. Hillary Rodham Clinton. That's right. Uh, Jakari, what do you think she's going to pull once she gets in? Because I mean, we've already seen what they've done so far, and it seems like everything is accelerating. What do you think is going to happen? I think she's going to go a whole hog if she gets in there. She's going to mm -hmm. try to pass everything that's been shot down, whether it's uh, gun control or this new uh, politically correct movement. I guess it's not new, but uh, growing in strength politically correct movement. She's going to do everything that she wants to do. She's going to keep telling these Whopper lies about how she dodges sniper fire like she's Neo in the Matrix and all these <laughs> other things that she's been doing the entirety of her career and always run into these people. She's so uh, experienced. People just hate her because she has so much experience. Well, let's look at her track record. What has she actually done that was good? She lies about everything. Uh, you know, she's uh, covering or she calls uh, bills uh bimbos or whatever the, the terminology was. She talks to the Benghazi victims. She promises she's going to help them. And then when they come out and want some accountability, she calls them liars. She tells them to get over it. We had the article up just last week about the uh, Benghazi widow who said, uh, Mrs. Clinton, you said you're going to help me and now you're telling me to get over it. Yeah, this is the type of on. action that we can expect from a President Clinton. Now, going to David Knight. David, let me ask you this question. What do you really think is going on here? Why is she so above the law? She looks like she's half dead. Clinton looks like he's going to die any minute. I mean, seriously. I, I said he was like a reanimated corpse a few years ago uh, on a day of the dead, but he looks like he's dying, uh, like people I've seen that are you know a month away from dying of cancer. David Knight, uh, why are the elite so behind him? Uh, they would put us to sleep if they put somebody younger in or somebody who didn't have all this baggage. Is this just the arrogance of the elite, or what are they planning? Yeah, Alex, uh, she's the only dog they've got in the fight at this moment. You know, we've had situations in the past. So you look at uh, four years ago, we had Obama and we had Romney. What they wanted then was Obamacare. They were going to get it whether they got Romney or Obama. And that's the way they like to play. They like to have uh, two people uh, on either side, this this fake uh, choice that they present. That's what Carol quickly said time. in Tragedy and Hope. He said, we just have right. two different parties, but really they're closely tied. So we get the that's same right. agenda regardless. But Trump upsets that. And you see that the establishment elite and both parties are very concerned about Trump. They want to do anything, no matter how blatant it is. And Alex, as I pointed out on Sunday, this was an orchestrated cover-up. We could see this developing. And I knew, and I said it on Sunday, I said, look, if you need, had any doubts as to whether or not she's going to get indicted, look at the fact that they scheduled the FBI meeting on the Saturday around the 4th of July weekend. That's other than like the last Saturday before Christmas. That's the, the time that they could only time they could pick where there'd be fewer people paying attention to this. And that's precisely what they've done. If you look at it a week ago, we had the snakes on a plane meeting and she says, well, it was just personal information. Look, we understand that Attorney General Lynch is a close personal friend of Bill Clinton. That's why she should have recused herself even before this meeting which violated every ethical standard that the American Bar Association or any other legal group would have there. She had a close personal relationship. She had a close working relationship with him. He is the one who gave her all of her big career breaks. They had a close political relationship. Those are the three tests as to whether or not you should recuse yourself. Plus she they checked had all the, three boxes. That's key, but plus they had the FBI order the cameras turned off 
I want to go back to you, David right. Jakari, on this, but let me ask Leanne this question. Why have the meeting? Why try to cover it up? Then why to try to act like it's no big deal once they did it? I got to tell you, it's like they did it on purpose. They know how to secretly meet and not yes. have to be on a tarmac in front of 50 reporters. When, 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 when Lynch was one of the hottest interviews at the time, being chased around, why are they doing this? Nichols knew them well, helped put them in power. He said they want to break our will. I agree. I agree. And that's almost what that's how I feel like my will is broken. Like they put it out in your face. They even leaked conveniently that Hillary Clinton is considering keeping uh, Loretta Lynch on as the attorney general if she gets elected. You know, they, it's like they're just putting out this information to just show us how above the law they are and how we're powerless. They can do whatever they want. The rules don't apply to them. Jakari, do you think it's that or do you think we're reading more into it? I mean, I'm just it's crazy how arrogant they are. I think they honestly feel that they are above the law, and, and to an extent, they have proved that. It's to a point now where they're just going to do anything they want because they know that nothing's going to happen to them. They're just going to come out there with the media machine, the politically correct machine. You hate Hillary because she's a woman. You don't want to see the first woman president. That's all they have. And to go on what David was talking about, Lynch's personal relationship as it comes to the Clintons. Okay, maybe they are close personal friends in real life, but if you get selected for jury duty and you know the, uh, the accused, you're not going to get selected for that jury. It's just that exactly. simple. Meanwhile, they have them running around uh, investigating them, and they're hanging out talking about supposedly golf. Well, she offered that as an excuse. Yeah, yeah, it's not an excuse. It's the reason that she shouldn't have even it's still called, been in that position as a prosecutor it's called or the judging rule. the evidence. If you're a judge, yeah. a prosecutor, or a witness in a trial right. or in a criminal case, you don't talk to the other people uh, outside of court or a registered you know, police uh, interrogation room. You do not talk to them. Yeah. No, I mean, what do we do at this point? How do we let this stand? I mean, that's what it is. They're breaking our will to let us see that we are completely powerless, but we're not powerless. How do we change this? That's a good question, David. I mean, how do you think we change it? I mean, I think in the court of public opinion, we, we destroy these people. We don't just lay down and have them break our will, just like they tried to break our will with the British exit. We just go to the next level. They're never going to give up. We're never going to give up. And that's what we have to understand. This is the animating contest of liberty, David. As we were talking about this morning, uh, Alex, it is really their declaration of independence of, of the rule of law. Because mm -hmm. as we saw last week, it, not only did she not recuse herself, as I point out, because of these close personal relationships, but then they did it in our face, as you're pointing out, with a declaration. Then the day that we learned about that, which was two days later, last Wednesday, they come out and say, we're not going to release any of the emails for at least 27 months. Mm -hmm. That was something the State Department wanted, and that was something the Department of Justice under Lynch said we're not going to do. Then we find out they're going to hold this meeting at the time that nobody's going to pay attention to it. When I heard that they were having, the FBI was going to have the uh, meeting today on Hillary Clinton, I told my wife, I said, that's it. They're not going to do that's anything right, at all to her. Right. But then when he started to talk about this, Alex, and he started to lay out all the details of what they had to do with their investigation, how they found 110 classified emails, and that was a felony, I said, I can't believe this. Sounds like he's going to indict her. And then he does a complete 180 you know again and really says, is? you know, they're you know felonies, really but we don't really care. Yeah. Just they're, don't try this at home. They're what covering he's Obama. They're covering for Obama. He won't even have to do a Nixonian pardon. Yeah. yeah. They're not even have to do a pardon because they're just going to have the bureaucracy pardons, you know. You this is really a almost a coup of the bureaucracy. This means yeah. if you can get in as the attorney general or the head of the FBI, wow. you run the country pretty much. I mean, yeah. This is way beyond J. Edgar Hoover at this point. Stay We're doing a roundtable discussion here a little bit in the next hour. Uh, then Roger Stone joins us with a lot of breaking news in the Clinton crime family and on the attempts to ban pro-Trump rallies uh, at the RNC, but they're going to let the Democrats operate. This just shows the fix is in, but don't let them oppress you as a political group. Don't let them silence you. Because if they're able to intimidate us and shut us up, then we're in a lot of trouble. This is the, this is a fight. Uh, Brady in Virginia, thanks for holding her on the air. Go ahead. Uh, hi, guys. I, I basically share the same frustration from the FBI's comments this morning. But I also had a thought going forward. I'm wondering, even after the liberal media and the Democrats, have criticized the Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch meeting. Do you think Bernie Sanders will still sell out and endorse Hillary? Absolutely. He, he, he's a socialist. He wants to gut this country. He, he hates it. He wants to see it brought down so him and his little commissars can divvy up the money and sit there in their duchies. And, and that's how this always works. These are predators. I mean, I believe he is a predator. He says a lot of stuff that sounds good on the surface, but he's a hardcore predator. When it comes time to him to really go up to the Federal Reserve stuff, he doesn't. 
Uh, so that th th that's my view on Sanders. What do you think? Uh, what do you think, Jakari? What do you think, David? Well, I agree with what you said right there. Uh, when you have a guy like Bernie Sanders, of course, he's not exactly happy as to uh, what happened between him and Clinton in the primaries. But at the end of the day, he's going to support that party because it's the closest thing to the uh, socialist utopia that he'd like to see happen. Right. Yeah, I, I think he was waiting in the wings, Alex, uh, to see if they're going to indict Hillary Clinton and if that was going to change things to the Democrat Party. But I don't think he ever had a chance. The Democrat leadership would not have uh, given this to him. I think they would have put in Joe Biden. I think they're that corrupt. Yeah, it's a Politburo uh, cult. They're the central committee, yeah. and now they admit that. They just appoint who the nominees are, and Trump's not playing along, so the fix is in. That's right. And you talk about what's going to happen next. We understand what's going to happen next because we've seen what they have done coming after whistleblowers. Look at the case of Thomas Drake, for example. Again, saying that he had classified emails on his computer, which he didn't. But they tried to put him away for 35 years, and we'll talk about that in detail uh, later today. But um, yeah, in the fourth hour. By the way, they yeah. they SWAT teamed, they SWAT yeah. teamed uh, Benny. That's right. I mean, this uh, Leanne. That's right. They trumped up charges against these people when mm -hmm. they hadn't done anything. That's what Hillary Clinton will do, whatever she wants. But she will punish her enemies, just as we've seen them try to punish these NSA whistleblowers. That's right, Leanne McAdoo. When you were around Austin, and I'm guessing you talked to some so-called liberals. I'm thinking you was like a real liberal libertarian. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you know we're. Uh, pretty pretty much politically on the same page as common sense freedom. When you're talking to liberals, I mean, I know some of them are supporting Hillary. I don't find many, which really shows what a hoax this is. Why are they supporting her? Or can you even find anybody? Well, I try very hard to not be around people who support Hillary Clinton. But if I do happen to run into that one odd fellow or female out there, I just, how do you gaslight yourself? How do you sit there and say that her crimes are excusable, that she could actually be the next president of the United States of America just because she's a woman. She, I mean, that's- As a woman, do you want the first woman president to be that lady? I, I would we not. We deserve better. As a woman, I deserve better. I deserve a better representative to be the first female president. What are, are the left just like Venezuela in places so dumb when everything collapses? They'll in five, ten years, they won't or even soon they won't even know why it happened. They'll just call for more socialism. Well, and that's what it is. It's like they're dumbing us down and they're just breaking our will to the point where people are just bending and they're saying, Well, she's totally corrupt and she's proven that she's above the law. They they come right out and say if anyone else does it, they're gonna go to jail. Sure. But she's fine. Caller, you anything else you want to add? Caller's gone. I'm gonna go right back and he's been holding the longest after that. Vincent. Uh, then uh, Denise Sargent and others, uh, Jakari Jackson and David Knight riding shotgun with us a bit more straight ahead. And then uh, they'll be back in the fourth hour today. Uh, and we've also got some other special guests joining us. Stay with us. Please spread the word about this feed, audio feeds, local stations, however you're listening to us. They don't want folks to hear this. Please don't take it for granted. All right, I'll continue with calls after uh, our roundtable leaves us here in about five minutes. And of course... Roger Stone's coming on with a lot of breaking news. But we're on your calls right now as well. Let's talk to Vincent in Washington. You're on the air, Vincent. What's your comment on the whole FBI not calling for an indictment of uh, in the invincible Hillary? Hey, Alex, how's it going, man? Good, brother. I, I, I tell you what, I, I am so speechless at the corruption and, and criminal activity that's going on by the government. and I'm, I'm so many times you talk about, you know, it's like twilight zone. These people are doing stuff right in people's faces. And it's like the majority of the, of the, of the country is so brainwashed. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like right in your face. They don't care. And people act like it's just normal. Well, that's what I'm getting from the listeners is the same thing. Just flabbergasted. Uh, we know she lied and said she didn't have the server, didn't have the email, had one device. We know she ordered them to cut the classified tops off. We know everybody's saying she should be indicted. And it's just, then you ask, what else is she going to get away with? Good, good. Same, same point everybody's making, Vincent. I appreciate your call. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, you know, F, Comey basically just said, yeah, like, like David Knight said, the, the political elite has, has, has given our, their declaration of independence from the law. They don't have to obey it. We do. And a quick thing on, 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 on the gun grab, uh, you know how uh, the California governor, he signed all those gun laws. They're, they're stripping the guns from the state of California. It's becoming a communist state. And then on top of that, to show how much they don't have to obey a law, 
the, the California Senate votes 28 to 8 to exempt themselves from the law. I forgot that. I saw that? that last week. Wow. That's what I mean. They, they, it's like literal. They are tax exempt. Like in the EU, they can have guns. Nobody else can. It's right. new royalty. Jakari, I think, uh, thank right. you so much, Vincent. Uh, uh, Jakari, I think it comes down to this. This is not just a declaration of independence against the law. It's a, it's a political revolution of the new royalty. I mean, I think that's what this is. I think it's what we call this. Uh, uh, final comments from Jakari and David Knight. Well, they are acting as if they're royal, you know, because they want a separate, as the caller was saying right there, they want a separate set of rules for themselves yeah. and the little people. You know, they have, they go to these buildings. You know, I want everybody to understand when you see these, these senators, these congressmen, these presidents, even your local city council saying we want to ban guns, we want to get rid of guns. They work in a building nine to five with taxpayer funded armed security. I'm sure they feel very safe when they go to work in the morning. But I'm talking about for everybody else in the country, if you work the graveyard shift in a bad part of town, you may need a little something, something to protect Absolutely. yourself. Well, that's As what makes this country so great, is the fact that we are given the right to defend ourselves and our families. And we're one of the only countries they haven't taken the right, David. As the laws become more draconian, Alex, on us, on the individual citizens, as they become more unconstitutional, they give more immunity to themselves. Think about the fact that we had Nixon and Clinton impeached, okay? Both of these were, people would say they were relatively minor charges. Nixon obstructed justice and Clinton committed perjury, okay? That's what they were impeached for. That was a pattern back then. Now they're saying, don't touch me. And of course, under Clinton, you had the, F, uh, the CIA director, John Deutsch, who did essentially the same thing. And he was not only indicted, but convicted and then pardoned by Bill Clinton. Don't That's tell right. me Let's that go further. know My what was going on with us. Final question, 20 seconds from each. Now they're above the law. What's the next shoe to drop? I, I, What's going to be exactly? Yeah, I'm sorry. So I agree that they're going to come after their political enemies. They've already been doing that. We've seen how they focus, and you know, no one is going to be exempt from this. And even the the left leftist media is now going, "Whoa, wait a minute! What have we done? Hillary's a monster. Everyone's protecting her, and they're I mean, they're complicit in this." Yeah, where are people's instincts, David Jacquard? Well, you know, Alex, uh, Thomas Drake, who I interviewed uh, once, he said in 2010, he said, what well, I didn't realize at the time was that he was the opening shot in the Obama administration's war on whistleblowers. He said they were way beyond what Bush did. Bush merely threatened. He that's said, right. That's he right. Actually Jakari, came what's after the next shoot to drop? Jail. What's the next shoot to drop? Censorship of the media. Censorship of the media. That Well, they don't really need it because they have enough of the media in their pocket. But for everybody else, Infowars.com, other ones out there, I'm pretty sure they're going to come after us pretty hard.